Pay is in capital letters. Uh, and we would like to thank the ANU Indonesia project and the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade for their support to the FKP Secretariat. So without further ado, we will start this morning with remarks from the Vice President of the Indonesian Regional Science Association, Professor Devanto Pratomo, who is a professor also at the Universitas Brawijaya. Pak Devanto, uh, the floor is yours. Bisa kelihatan, Bu Lydia? Kelihatan, Pak Devanto. Oke. Okay. Uh, ya, selamat pagi. Good morning, uh, everyone. Salam sehat selalu. Bapak Ibu yang saya hormati, friends. Uh, it's uh, our pleasure, actually, the Indonesian Regional Science Association, IRSA, to have a seminar today, uh, collaborated with the FKP and also the ANU, Indonesia Project. Uh, was always been a supporter for IRSA actually. Uh, this event actually is uh, the second event related to the progress of our book chapter. Uh, we have similar uh, event last week. We are now working on the IRSA book series or book chapter on regional development number 19. And for uh, this uh, chapter, for this number, uh, the books is, will be edited by Pak Budi Resa Sudarmo, Pak Sony Priasono, uh, myself, Bu Tri Mulyaningsih, and also uh, Pak Arif Yusuf as a president of the uh, IRSA. And the topic is about the regional perspective of the COVID-19 in Indonesia. The topic itself is actually uh, timely because we understand that uh, almost one year we we uh, struggle on the pandemic and most of us still still working very hard uh, on the on on this uh, pandemic covid-19 and as far as i know this book is also the first book that uh, uh, that compiled together the regional perspective of the covid-19 in indonesia uh, for this year uh, this book we received actually about 33 uh, papers And we are still now working on the final editing of the 17th paper. I think the the aspect is quite quite uh, complete. Yeah, we have uh, six uh, five paper in the interregional perspective, and also six paper on the Western and Central uh, perspective of Indonesia, and also six also papers on the Eastern perspective of Indonesia, and we are delighted that. Uh, today we have uh, three papers, three presenters that uh, would like to discuss about uh, three topics about about the regional perspective of Indonesia. Uh, don't forget that this year, 2021, we also have a IRSA conference uh, on July that will be hosted by the Universitas Gajah Mada. And this book actually, this book actually will be uh, uh, launched. Uh, In, in in this uh, conference yeah. uh, last but not least i would like to once again thanks to all of the supporters of the irsa and also the the uh, this seminar fkp and UNSA project the editors and also uh, the presenter today the participant uh, please enjoy the seminar enjoy the the discussion and thank you i return to bu lydia Thank you, Bolivia. Thank you, Pak Devanto. And I just want to also point out, uh, uh, as I did last week, IRSA has been uh, working actively for more than 20 years. Yeah, it was uh, formed in the late 1990s. So congratulations for IRSA for uh, uh, consistently pro being productive and actually reaching a lot of people uh, in Indonesia. This morning's webinar will be uh, chaired by Professor 
Sony Priyarsono from IRSA and also a professor at IPB University. So, Pa Sony, the floor is yours to chair the webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Lydia. Good morning, colleagues and friends. I'm very happy to be the moderator of this webinar. On behalf of IRSA, I would like to thank the presenters of this morning session and also the audience for joining us in this session. We have three papers that will be presented in this session. I will make sure whether Professor Afifi is with us now. Professor Afifi, are you ready? Pak Mansur? Yeah, Pak. Okay, okay. Let me introduce our first uh, presenter. Professor Mansur Afifi is a is professor of economics and development studies at Universitas Mataram. He earned his doctorate from the University of Ruhr Bochum, Germany. And he, he will present a paper entitled Impact of COVID-19 on the Economy of West Nusa Tenggara Province and Government Policy Responses. Pak Mansur, you have 15 minutes. Please let me remind you if you are about uh, at the end of your presentation time. Okay, Pak Mansur, the microphone and the screen are yours now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and also thank you for <coughs> giving me the opportunity to present my paper. Uh, Um, as uh, pre mentioned that the title of my presentation today is the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on the economy of West Nusa Tenggara province and government policies. Uh, my presentation will be consist of uh, background of objective measures, government policies, initiative, impacts of COVID-19 on economic and social indicators, survey of regional economies on economic perspectives, and some proposed regional recovery strategy plan. <clears throat> First confirmed cases of COVID-19 were found in the first time on March 24. 2020 in West Tenggara province and have continued to increase until until now. And one of the victim of the COVID-19 is myself and my family, unfortunately. But I think there is a, a good news that now we uh, become a, a donors of uh, uh, of plasma for patient COVID-19. And there's <clears throat> the second one uh, that uh, the large social scale social restriction, uh, which is implemented uh, by government in almost all of our Indo Indonesia uh, has, I mean, has uh, reduced the mobility of, of people and production activities. And also the cases of worker housing and layoff uh, brings about the reducing of purchasing power as income decrease. And since the first quarter of 2020, several economic uh, indicators have shown slower growth performance. Uh, until December, we have uh, 5,725 uh, 
confirmed cases with uh, 288 uh, deaths you know, in West Nusa Tenggara. This uh, number is relatively uh, big in comparison to the case in, in, in Indonesia. And I think uh, the case in West Nusa Tenggara Barat is is uh, <coughs> categorized as uh, 10 big cases in Indonesia. And the objective of my paper is first of all to describe the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on the performance of economics and social aspect of National Satangara province. The second one is to analyze regional government policies in dealing with COVID-19 pandemic by setting cluster and metric specific impacts. And the last one is to formulate policy recommendation for economic recovery efforts in the short and medium term. Uh, several methods we use in <coughs> analyzing or in uh, uh, attempting to achieve the objective is descriptive statistic method and qualitative analysis. And the primary qualitative data include including the local government policies in dealing with the impacts of COVID-19 pandemic and also regional economic perception. And so policies consist of, of uh, <coughs> policies related to local government regulation uh, and regional budget policies uh, as well as economic recovery policies. And the last method uh, is, to, is comparing government performance indicators in dealing with uh, pandemic. In, in this um, case, we employ important performance analysis or Cartesian diagram. Uh, Local government has issues, uh, <clears throat> several policies in, in dealing with uh, the uh, pandemic, COVID pandemic. First of all, is government institute a policy relating to local government regulation, which is called PERDA and PERGUP. And the second one is reallocating regional budget policies. The, Third one is instituting regulation, regional regulation on controlling this is on August now, on August 3rd, 2020. The PEDA aims at an attempt to accelerate the bridge in the chain of COVID-19 spread. And this PEDA applying uh, is applying of 500,000 for citizens who do not Use mines in public places of crowd and six months in prison. But until now, we have not heard about the, the implementation of the uh, fines and punishment. And um, to improve the economic condition of uh, West and South Tengara province, regional government also initiate the micro, small, and medium enterprise uh, empowerment program, uh, which uh, we call uh, NTB Gemila. And also government uh, create program for job creation and labor intensive and, and provide assistance for affected uh, business. So this is the reallocation of, of budget and we uh, regional budget government regional government has um, reallocated its budget and now as we see as we see here that the regional income decreased from 20 trillion to 19 trillion and also the uh, expenditure uh, decrease from 20, 20 trillion to 20, 21 trillion to 20 trillion. Uh, although government 
um, reduce uh, its public income, uh, government also provide about nine nine hundred and twenty six uh, billion for uh, COVID nineteen, and this budget is divided into uh, three items. First of all, health affair, uh, which is the, the the largest budget, the largest amount of money, and the second one is uh, for the economic impact, and this, the the last for social safety net. Uh, <clears throat> this policy, I think, it's a, it's an effort of regional government to. Uh, overcome the problem of COVID pandemic, and and we can see how the policy, uh, uh, how the impact of the policy in several economics indicators. First of all, we would like to show you the economic growth in Western Satangara uh, because of. COVID, you know, in second quarter of 2020, we experienced a, a contraction of economic growth. However, about 1.41. However, uh, the trend of economic growth until the year, the end of 2020s, it's quite, uh, it's look uh, better, you know. So there is an improvisation in the economic growth, both in if in investment in Tenggara Barat we count the uh, economic growth in two different ways. First of all, without mining because mining uh, plays very significant role in economic of Western Tenggara, and and the second one is <coughs> without mining, with mining and without mining, and. And we see that uh, economic without mining uh, contracts or, or has experienced a negative uh, growth, you know, from in second second quarter of 2020, uh, about almost 8%. And this is actually the economy of the communities we call economy rakyat. You know? so, economy of communities uh, uh, grow very, very uh, bad. And this is the sector that uh, <clears throat> uh, has positive and negative growth. As we know that uh, activities which is uh, affected um, uh, <clears throat> tremendously by the social restriction uh, policy is accommodation and transportation and trade, you know. However, some some sector that has a positive uh, <coughs> growth during the, the year 2020 or during the year of pandemic, for example, information and communication, mining, electricity, water supply, financial service, and government administration. And this is the property rights on we the available data <coughs> now is on match. Unfortunately, we do not have data on September and and as we <coughs> know that uh, data on match has not uh, presented uh, um, a, a big picture of pandemic. You know? So we are st still waiting for the data on September 2020, but until now it should be it should be published on November 5th, 2020. But until now, there's no um, official data has been um, published. And employment rate also <coughs> increased tremendously from 3.14 to 4. 22. This is because of uh, <coughs> uh, worker housing and light up, up in in 
uh, many industries and uh, business in Western South Tenggara. And you, you still have about three <coughs> minutes. And again, in disparity. Okay. okay. Uh, disparity income, disparity rate also <coughs> uh, has not been published until today. It should be uh, published on September, uh, on, on November 5th, but until today, there is no information about the condition of disparity rate in September 2020. Uh, inflation, okay. Inflation occurred during March and June period indicate that people purchasing power decrease even though the idul fitri holiday in May could be pushed up price which had been one of the main causes, case, causes of inflation but it doesn't it didn't work at the time you know <clears throat> i would like to okay to uh, evaluate the policy of of regional government we use important performance analysis to compare two things as indicators of government performance in dealing with the pandemic. We compare the confirmed cases of COVID-19 with the economic condition during the pandemic and between economic condition and the policy existence. Each of the comparison will result four possibilities which can be described in important performance metrics or the Cartesian diagram consisting of four quadrants. If we <clears throat> look at this um, Cartesian diagram between COVID-19 cases and economic condition in Western South Tenggara Barat, we conclude that uh, the case of uh, <clears throat> the case of COVID-19 increase. Uh, meanwhile, the economic uh, is worse. And if we compare between economic condition and policies in in west satangara barat and we and we will find that the there is a policy to deal with uh, the pandemic but the economy is still worse and and this is the condition in almost all of uh, province in indonesia and we have also the result of survey of economist perception on economic perspectives in uh, Western South Tenggara Barat, and most of the economists uh, <coughs> says that in in the next uh, six months, this this uh, survey was conducted in July and July 2020, and from July we uh, <coughs> we asked the perception of economists about the economic in next three months and, and six months and also in 2020. And most of of uh, economists says that uh, in next six months or by the end of December, economic will be, will condition of economic will be better. And in 2020, I think uh, we will, uh, <coughs> will be released from the pandemic of COVID. <coughs> And also we provide a uh, 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 strategy of economic recovery for the leading sectors. We have several leading sectors in, in West Nusa Tenggara Barat and we uh, think that development of local economic sector of uh, uh, <coughs> uh, micro and small medium, medium enterprise for inclusive uh, growth is a uh, a, a good uh, thing to do, you know. Even as we know that uh, ninety percent of uh, micro and small and medium enterprise have suffered from the the pandemic. So government need to to develop um, or to provide assistance for them. And this is a strategy of regional. Uh, recovery that we propose, social safety net, uh, health recovery, disaster resilience. And also the important thing is uh, rebuilding the culture of mutual cooperation as a social capital for the community. 
because we see that uh, mutual cooperation is uh, <coughs> is our culture that uh, seem appears uh, disappear now and the next one is increasing regional or regi increasing regional origins uh, revenue by an extensification of revenue sources and intensification of collection even though now the situation is um, it's very difficult to to do or to increase the regional origin revenue but the next uh, next time or in the next year will be a good idea to to be realized and this the <clears throat> last one is reviewing the expenditure process policy to increase the absorption rate and to optimize the role of public budget because we know that the problem of uh, <clears throat> public budget is um, expenditure uh, the, the rate of of expense the rate absorption rate of expen expenditure is relatively low but uh, and still that uh, government can use their budget by the end of the year which is uh, i mean uh, reducing the optimal optimality of uh, of budget to overcome the uh, development issues. And this Could is you also- you make it shorter, Pak Mansur? Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, but the last uh, <coughs> section is uh, policy recommendation, and I think we can discuss this uh, later. Thank you very much for- your Thank you very much, Professor Mansur Afifi of Universitas Mataram. Thank you very much again. Our next uh, presenter is Dr. Ludia Teresia Wam Brau. She is a lecturer at the Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas Negeri Papua. She earned her degree in Agribusiness and Rural Economic Development from Lincoln University, New Zealand. She conducted a research with Ms. Agatha Wahyu Widati and Ms. Chusina Waromi of the same university. Their paper title is Availability, Distribution and Price Trend of Strategic Food Commodities during the COVID-19 pandemic in West Papua. Dr. Wamrau, are you ready? I'm ready, Pak. Okay, you have 15 minutes. You can start now, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, Pia Hasono. Good morning and good afternoon for Papua. Thank you for this opportunity for us to presenting our paper entitled Availability, Distribution and Price Trend of Strategic Food Commodities During the COVID-19 Pandemic in West Papua Province. We divided the presentation into seven sections. The first one is Introduction, Next West Papua Province Economy, next COVID-19 spread in West Papua, and then availability and distribution of strategic food commodity. After that, price trend of strategic food commodities, constraint and strategy carried out by the government, and the last one is the conclusion. Okay, we will start with the introduction. As we know, the world is facing unprecedented global health and social economic crisis due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which is start at the beginning of the year 2020. The COVID-19 was confirmed to have spread in Indonesia in March 2020. The COVID-19 pandemic is not only having a major impact on health aspect, but also but also aspect all affect all aspects of human life, including the economic and business sector and logistic movement. Facility of food distributions are becoming limited, so these are resulting in a lack of food productivity. 
The pandemic has an impact on agricultural sector through several perspectives, such as the weakening of labor productivity, the reduction of total productivity factor, the cost of trading in agriculture of agricultural products, so that impact on increasing agricultural commodity prices. Because of the pandemic, there is a change in the lifestyle of the community because public demand as the food consumer to change. At the beginning of the pandemic, we can see that people have stopped piling behavior as a result of the fear of COVID-19 itself and food accessibility. The pattern of consumer spending on food has also begun to change from self-buying to transaction using digital or online platform. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected the availability and distribution of food to various regions in Indonesia. And with social and regional restriction, food distribution has become weak. Food products that give more concern are staple and strategic food product. The main and strategic food product are referred to as rice, corn, shallot, garlic, large chili, small chilies, beef or buffalo, chicken meat, chicken eggs, sugar, and cooking oil. An area is, which is not food independent. Food supply from outside West Papua come from East Java, Hello, Ibu Wambrau. Lydia, can you hear Dr. Wambrau's voice or not? Yeah, Ibu Lydia seems to have um, Yeah, now it's stopped. Okay. Ibu can we Yosina, invite would you the like second to... speaker? I mean a uh, member of of her team to yeah, take I over. I think Ibu Yosina is here. Okay. Ibu, Ibu Yosina, would you like to continue? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Uh, do I, you want I, to share screen or do you want me to share the screen? Uh, I want to uh, share screen from my, my laptop. Silakan, Ibu. Oh, oh my goodness. Double click, Ibu. Okay. Okay, all right. The goal of this paper is to analyze strategic food availability, distribution, and price trends in West Papua during the COVID-19 pandemic and strategies carried out by the government. Yeah, uh, I will describe West Papua Province economy. West Papua Province is one province located in West, in Papua Island, and West Papua Province is one of Indonesian provinces with positive economic growth during the economy during the COVID nineteen pandemic. Uh, based on BPS data, show that the GDP growth according to sector which is active on April until June. 2020 was 0.53%, which must lower than before the pandemic in October until December 2019, which was 8.27%. The COVID pandemic has also caused sectors in West Papua 
to close their businesses temporarily or even permanently. Based on BPS survey, so that two point zero three percent of workers experience layoff and twenty five point six sixty eight percent were temporarily laid off. And this is be uh, this is caused the decline in income during the pandemic. And the business fields most affected by the pandemic are the wholesale and retail trade sector, care, motorcycle repair, their transportation. COVID-19 spread in West Papua, the impact of several implemented policies shows the trend of development of COVID-19 cases in West Papua in the first three months tends to be slow compared to several provinces in Indonesia. However, in mid-July, 2020, when the new normal policy was implemented, the spread of COVID-19 to increase significantly. We can see from the graph, when the new normal uh, implemented, so the number of cases is increased dramatically. Okay. Yeah, West Papua Provincial Government actions in dealing with COVID-19 pandemic, implementing COVID-19 protocols, such as wearing masks, maintaining distance, and avoiding the hassle. Forming the COVID-19 task force at the provincial and district levels. Issuing government policies related to teaching and learning activities and work from home. Reducing the working hours, as well as limiting community gathering activities. Providing facilities used by the medical team in treating COVID-19 patients and bringing in personal protective equipment. For the medical teams, specific, specifically for COVID-19 patients, determining the use of referral hospital to treat patients COVID-19. And so on, you can, uh, you can read this. Yeah. The next, availability and distribution of strategic food commodities. Uh, we know that Eastern Indonesia has relatively low food independence if it is only measured by the rice commodity. West Papua is the second region with the lowest food independence in Indonesia after Papua province, with a food self-sufficiency percentage of 2.2%. West Papua Food Security Index is currently still at 36.77%, uh, which means it is still in a vulnerable status and disfigure occurs in normal conditions. Uh, we have no data about the pandemic conditions. The West Province is still very dependent on other, other regions for the availability of strategic food commodities. In order to meet the needs of strategic food commodities or the demands of the community for staple foods, it is necessary to have availability or stock of them. Regional logistics affairs are usually regulated by the government through the logistics agency or bullock. The majority of food commodities from outside West Papua are distributed to the region using UC transportation, either by cargo ships or passenger ships owned by PT Pelni. Among the commodities, the rice commodity is mostly distributed to West Papua province compared to other strategic food commodities. It can be seen that not all the commodities that enter the province are distributed to regions or cities but some are stored as food reserves in West Papua. Yeah, we can see in the graph, uh, rice commodity is the most 
mostly commodity that distribute in some areas in West Papua. Food commodities that enter the West Papua will then be distributed to its region as needed. The transportation infrastructure within the West Papua regions is also a determining factor in food distribution. Inter-district or district transportation infrastructure for certain areas is still inadequate due to geographical position and the availability of transportation. Even in pandemic condition, the distribution of food commodities is expected to be carried out effectively, efficiently, and evenly in every region or city. Yeah, related to price trend of strategic food commodities, because the majority of strategic, strategic commodities in West Papua are fulfilled from outside the province, such as from Java, Sulawesi, and Nusa Tenggara Barat. So uh, the price of strategic food commodities uh, to be high than other regions in Indonesia. The existence of restrictions on mobility between regions due to the COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted food availability in West Papua. The distribution cost affect the prices of these strategic commodities. The West Papua province industry and trade service, we call Parindak, is reported that during the COVID-19 pandemic, there was an increase in prices for several basic needs commodities such as sugar, salads, garlic, and eggs. The price increases occurred in traditional markets, uh, kiosks, shops that are selling both retail and wholesale products. Products. This is due to reduce from stocks, due to large scale social restrictions from the community production areas and due to the increase of household demand for stock, due to the excessive concern that foodstuffs will run out due to pandemic. The chicken and egg price do not significantly increase are because the majority of people in West Papua live in coastal areas and consume fresh fish more often. Salads, garlic, and chilies price tend to be fluctuated. In fact, the price recorded at the provincial level shows in the next diagram is some, in some cases are not in line with the prevailing market uh, price at the region, regional level. Product shortage due to the pandemic have caused price to rise sharply. An increase in garlic and shallot price are because garlic stocks in West Papua are imported from China, but also supply from Surabaya, while shallot are distributed from NTB, NTB, Surabaya, and South Sulawesi by the traders directly. You still have some two minutes, Ibu. Okay. Yeah. I go to the... Yeah, we can see at the graph, uh, most the main commodity prices in West Papua increased by 1,000 until 1,000 1, to 3,000 rupees. Uh, if we compare to if in, uh, in 2019 and 2020. This is rice, sugar. With flour from egg to 12,000 12, rupees, cooking oil, it reads 20,000 rupees. Shallot and garlic, chili, chicken, eggs, and broiled chicken. Constraint and strategies strategy carried out. Yeah, the slow economic growth is a whip for the government to strengthen extraordinary efforts, including support to the health sector in West Papua for handling the COVID-19, which is still constrained by facilities 
distribution of social protection programs and support for the business world, including through regional economic recovery programs and accelerated government spending. These constraints also occur in the other sectors, considering in the existence of PSDB, consistent distribution, and access to product community. Food problems in West. Come to the conclusion, Ibu. Okay, thank you very much. Conclusion. The COVID-19 pandemic has had an impact of every aspect of life, such as health, education, economy, and infrastructure. The existence, existence of a social restriction policy to terminate the spread of the COVID-19 virus has resulted in changes to production, supply, distribution, and prices of strategic commodities throughout Indonesia, including West Papua. Several things that can be concluded regarding strategic food commodities in West Papua are First, the amount of price availability and distributions is more than other strategic commodities. Second, price for rice and cooking oil are relatively stable. Uh, third, price for sugar, flour, shallots, and garlic and eggs have increased relatively. Price for chicken, chicken and chilies fluctuate. Uh, for as a measure to anticipate the impact of COVID-19 on the availability and stability of food prices in West Papua, the government, through its related institution, is trying to ensure that facilities and assistance assistance in all food lines from production to consumption run properly so that people in West Papua can access these food commodities at the appropriate amount, time, and price. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ibu Jusina. Thanks to the all women team from West Papua. Thank you very much. Now we have the last presentation that will be delivered by Dr. Willem A. Tenny Wood from Polytechnic Perikanan Negeri Tual. Dr. Tenny Wood is a lecturer at Tual State Fisheries Polytechnic. He completed his bachelor's degree in economics at IPB University and a master's degree in management from Universitas Islam Indonesia. He will present a paper entitled The Impact of COVID-19 Pandemic Risk and Uncertainty on economic welfare of remote small islands region. Pak Tenny Wood, you have 15 minutes. You can start okay. now. Okay, uh, hello. I hope everyone can hear my voice. Yes. And, uh, okay. And I hope everyone doing great during this uh, pandemic and stay COVID free. And first of all, I would like to express my highest gratitude to Professor Wilur Sudarwo to give me a chance to be a part of this book series. And also to Indonesia Regular Science Association, uh, FKP, ANU Initial Project, and everyone that involved in the book series from editing to proofreads to publishing, and also everyone that involved in this seminar to a chance to talk about my work. Uh, this is a lot an honor for me because one uh, the, the brother of the seminar is my lecturer back in college at Bogor High School University. So this is uh, kind of proud moment for me. So <laughs> I'm kind of happy to present my work in uh, this event. Hello, uh, and my name is William Alisal Mustafa Uh I am a lecturer and researcher at, in special academic study program in two state studies polytechnic in Southeast Maluku. So we are like the far east, southeast in Indonesia. And today I will talk about my work with title COVID-19 pandemic risk toward coastal local economic welfare of small island region. So uh, I do hope that my study really bring a new per perspective and new insight to the regular science study field and also economic regular study field, especially related to the impact of COVID-19 pandemic risk to 
the local economy. So because uh, in our region, in K Islands, we have a very distinct characteristic in terms of social economic characteristic and social cultural, and also in the geog geographical characteristic and cultural. So we bring an interesting case in uh, in the view of uh, COVID, pand COVID pandemic effect to our local economy. So let's get to it. Okay, as uh, same as uh, the, the previous uh, presenter, that in eastern part of Indonesia, we, we do have a, a, like a different kind of level of high dependency to the region to really function properly. In terms of uh, supply of supply or uh, essential goods, foods, uh, and if we, because in KLS, we, if, if, even though we have a very high and abundant marine resources because we are, are located in the coral triangle, we have a high biodiversity, we have very uh, like rich uh, uh, marine resources, but it is elderly our sea. We don't really see the like the supply in constant in quantity and quality in our region. And if we compare to the other, uh, the nearest uh, area in our region, which is in Labor Island and Seram Island, out there they really, they they really do have a, like large paddy field. They have crops, they have chilies field, they have corn field that really can support their own uh, lead. So in, in here, we don't really have like a uh, large cassava field farm, like, uh, like uh, cow farming and other like, and stuff like that because uh, in here, we just like conducted our, our business like in pragmatic way. So uh, in, in, either, of uh, agriculture or fisheries uh, user or fisheries, uh, fisheries user is like doing their, their business activity in the traditional way. So the lack of consistency in uh, uh, quality and quality, which is related to the second factor here because uh, the most of people in here and most of village in more than 85 to 70, Nine percent fields in KLS are located in coastal area. Prof. Budi Wasodara already been here, so he know the condition in here. So, because and, uh, uh, because of that, in order to the local economy to thrive, like really doing a great job, the uh, ag agriculture sector and fishery sector need to like uh, doing a good job, like really really de develop in some level. So, the multiplier effect. It, uh, really being felt by the coastal community. This is a challenge because in here, the, uh, there is a, like a, a cliche or like a, 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 a characteristic uh, social and economic in here, like in, in coastal area, I mean, is, is uh, like they have uh, like a low uh, education level. They have a large amount of family members because they tend to uh, very, very young. So they have a lot of children. Even at their old age, they also have uh, like a, a newborn baby. So it is hard for me to uh, uh, like the follow from the coastal area because the lack of uh, social economy uh, characteristic and also the infrastructure that support uh, the area. And because of that, the products that really uh, uh, being produced here, and especially related to agriculture and fisheries product, are still in raw. So they just uh, sell it straight, straight away from the sea or the, the farming to the, the local market. So it has really low added value. So the impact to the local economy is still very low. So, and then and the, the fourth one is uh, related to the coastal buyer in the region especially in two local market in the region, it is, they very rely on the expenditure or expense from the government plea, either from C47 or uh, police armed force or uh, army because they have a constant uh, salary as well. So, but uh, other than that, there is no really like constant bear. So it, it is like a, a vicious cycle. There is no really uh, supply that can support our region, but also the there is a, a limited buyer. So if we like we 
view it as uh, from the regular standpoint, we can see literally and on this map that if it's uh, we we have to zoom in several times to able, able to look at in our region because we uh, and and that really speaks volume about the challenge in like supply chain and this dis disruption on supply chain because it took two days to reach the nearest big city in our region, which is Alabo City, and four days to Bakasar, five and six days to Surabaya and Jakarta respectively. So it is quite challenging. It is if, if, if and it uh, took longer if we use a cargo ship and I have a uh, experience to send my product to the sur to Surabaya, it took like uh, almost a month. So that yeah, can you imagine if we like we uh, sell our seaweed product to Sur Sur Surabaya and it took a month. It will lead a like a sophisticated cold chain that really pr preserve the seaweed so it do, do, do not die that do not damage the quality of the seaweed. So it is ch challenging here. Even before the, the pandemic happened in uh, K, K Islands. Now, if we look at move closer to, to the impact of COVID, COVID to, to, to global and regular economy, we can see that there is a supply shock, especially since every country in the world, every government impose a, a restriction policy. That alone can can cause supply shock and also demand shock because it prevents uh, a manufacturer and every company to limit their production because uh, government force them to like uh, to re reduce their employee. So it is also a little bit And also uh, the demand shock because uh, government force people to just stay home, so they don't really uh, do some conventional processing as it was before pandemic. So it uh, those shock combined cause the globalization and as uh, previously made by Professor Mansuk early and also studied by uh, Indonesia Statistic that we it, we Indonesia have a ec ec economic contraction. So and, and also report by the EU uh, European nation that uh, countries in the European nation will have a, like, a slower period time to recover from this uh, COVID-19 and de depends on this, the spike of the outbreak on its uh, area. So if we move closer to COVID pandemic in Kayales, the first case in Maluku are uh, probably this the same time as the first case in Indonesia. But the first case in KLS is two months later. And during that time, the local government already uh, apply and restricted accordingly to the central go government policy to restrict all the seaport, the airport, the traveling between uh, regions. So at that time, we, we do have a very different kind of uh, sense of urgency in terms of how we respond to uh, the pandemic, but since the central government like like pull all the plug and just let pe pe people go back to school, quote unquote, uh, open the the, the workplace, uh, pe uh, the mosque, the church, and then the the pe people in here is especially I don't know I I, I can speak for other region, but in, in here especially. They take it as it's over. There is no there is no pandemic and uh, and like uh, edit with the uh, the the some hoax and information about well uh, the pandemic is hoax and if if if, if we get it you can just self healing like yeah. so it, the uh, self of urgency just start to decline when the government uh, start to plug all the so uh, until now, especially in the last two months from December to January, the number of uh, uh, COVID cases in K, K Island especially it starts to grow in significantly. Even our mayor and the the, the, the wife of uh, the region from uh, South East Malcolm District still at the ICU because uh, the COVID-19. So, the COVID is still far for long gone in our, 
I will read it. Therefore, by Will you, you have uh, some three minutes. Okay, then. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, the by I I I of the studies to identify the risk of the the of the to local economy. By doing so, I'm combining a two uh, portfolio on micro uh, multi-criteria decision making which, which is I'm combining analytical data process and fancy top topsies to really have a better and valid uh, risk that we uh, about uh, uh, related to the effect of COVID-19 to the local economy. By doing so, I'm like using a two categories of sample. The first one is uh, local business actor, which is farming, uh, a farmer, fisherman, and aquaculture farmer, and also non-local, which is an expert here, which is, you see that I'm using uh, eight expert in MCDM, they, they call their uh, sample or uh, sources as experts. So yeah, this kind of here. So we, I, I'm using a pra practitioner, policymaker, healthcare worker, and like academic to uh, to weight all my study. And the result of the first portfolio of MCDM is I, I help me, I'm, uh, I found that the most cluster that really and most factor that really need to be paid attention to is the government policy, because in here the fishermen and agricultural farmers are, are really those that really suffer, because people stop to go to local market. So any economist knows either uh, direct guest assistance or any social assistance is really play a huge and important role to. Uh, uh, they uh, they release the negative effect of COVID-19 to local economy. And for the risk, I, I found that the potential risk that really, if this condition still just lingers on, then there is no really significant change in government policy, especially, then it is some kind of worry, like the pref, uh, previous uh, uh, pre presentation in Papua Barat said before, it, it, it is, uh, a real threat to have low uh, daily need and su su uh, uh, food supply. And this is too because people stop to, uh, for the consumer standpoint, people stop to go to the local market because they are afraid they will co contract the virus. And also the government in here is still like uh, limited uh, the number of citizens and also from producer standpoint, which is CFA, uh, uh, power, and agricultural power still uh, they have like uh, have no intention like they don't really feel compelling to sell their product to the local market because the price is so unstable because in one day you can like rise like five hundred thousand dollar per fish but in next day it's just fifteen thousand so it really de depends on anything so it is really volatile in here and can we jump to the conclusion okay so, I'm sorry. okay for the result that i found the six potential risks the the the, the most one is the limited and the maybe low really su supply in goods or demand and the second one is uh potential conflict because we do have uh, uh like history of conflict and th there is a lot of bad behavior in here that really cause and can really trigger the conflict because you know it is scary if we don't have the food to eat and also uh my studies have a, a, a several weakness which is the the first one really if it, this is uh, will still happen if there's no really change in government uh policy if it if 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 tomorrow if we change then the result will what will, will hold up so i do hope that this co uh, the local government of the KLS can really do a better job especially uh, related to fishermen and uh are to farm thank you very talking for me i give a like to pass on thank you thank you very much willem willem was my uh, student at uh, my university so i'm very happy to see you today uh, colleagues and friends, let me 
give you a very brief uh, summary. So we have three uh, papers. All of them, in my opinion, consist of uh, three main points. The first one is a description of the effects of COVID-19 pandemic on their respective uh, regional economies. That is the first uh, main point. The second one is a discussion on the response of the public uh, decision makers. So the public policy response to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic effects. That is the, uh, the second point, main point of the papers, all of the papers. And the last one is some evaluation and recommendation on the topics. Of course, uh, each topic uh, has its own uh, stressing point. For example, the first one stresses on the evaluation of uh, regional public policies. The second paper stresses on the uh, food. And the last one is very interesting. It's about the, the risk, the perceived risk, uh, the future risk of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now we still have some uh, 20 minutes or less for the Q&A uh, session. We have already have a question from Bapa Iwan Hermawan. You can read his uh, questions in uh, Lydia Nabitupulu would like to answer this question live. Uh, I guess Lydia means that uh, Ibu Josina, Ibu Josina can can uh, answer this first question, or Ibu Wambrau, or Ibu uh, the, the second one, Ibu Wati, Ibu Wambrau, are you ready to answer? Yeah, the I'm ready, Pa. I'm okay. Ready, Yes, please, Ibu Ludia. What is the question, Pak? The question is uh, from Pak Iwan. So he noticed that in your regional economy, the economic growth is still positive even after the pandemic. So could you explain the reason behind that effect? Yeah. Okay, Pak. So the growth is still positive, but the, the economic growth is, you know, reducing. So even it's still positive until December, the economic growth in West Papua is still positive, but the, num the number of the growth is reducing its time. So for example, on April is uh, the, the first three months of the pandemic is still good, but after that it's getting reduced. So the economic growth, how do you say it? Um, uh, experience contraction of the economic, something like that. Okay, so it's still positive, but the number is decreasing. Yes, That's still yes. Okay, okay yeah. thank you very much. Now, all of you are invited to raise questions to the presenters. Lydia, you raise hand. You want to say something? Yeah, sure. While we're waiting for others to ask questions, I have a couple of questions. One is for Pa Mansur of PP, Pa. Uh, it's about tourism. We hear in the news the tourism situation in Bali that they would like to open it, that there are a lot of tourists there. Um, recently, uh, you know, some tourists actually invited other tourists and tell them how to 
uh, get a visa and get a, a longer stay, apa, trik-triknya gitu ya. So, um, what is the tourism situation in West Nusa Tenggara and especially maybe in Lombok? Is it is tourism, are there still tourists? Um, are international flights allowed? And uh, what about the tourism economy? Uh, maybe briefly. Uh, and my other question is for Ibu Ludia and team. So, um, is this? Do you think this is a chance for Papua to uh, strengthen their uh, agricultural sector? Do you see people? maybe uh, reversing to locally produced uh, Lydia. local oh, okay. people. Uh, that's my question for Ibu Ludia. Uh, did you, were you able to hear my question, Bu? I think my internet is also unstable here in Bo 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 I can hear a little bit, but I can catch the question. Okay, thank you. That's uh, those are just uh, those two are just my question. Thank you. Okay, so you have two questions, Rita. Thank you very much. Let us now listen to Professor Afifi's answer to the first question. Pak Mansur, are you ready? <coughs> yeah. Yes, please. Okay, Pak. Pak Sony, thank you. Thank you, Bu Lydia, for your question. I think the condition of tourism in um, in Lombok is similar to Bali due to the uh, social restriction uh, policies. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> and in like in Bali, tourism sector is the I mean uh, has suffered uh, the most uh, in in all sectors in uh, all sector of economics in, in West Nusa Tenggara. And uh, in July, for example, there are 4,000 workers in uh, tourism sectors uh, uh, layoff. And, and, uh, uh, and that is, uh, I mean, causing the sectors of as, as mentioned in presentation, the uh, categories of um, restaurant and 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 hotel you know, uh, experience uh, negative growth you know, during during the pandemic, and and the, the second one is the condition of international tourism in 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 Lombok. Um, uh, I think uh, I have never seen um, to international tourism in, in on the street in, in Mataram or in anywhere in Lombok, you know. And I think uh, the condition is similar to the social uh, restriction uh, policy. And this is uh, and domestic also domestic flight also reduce. Uh, significant, uh, very significant numbers, in, in, uh, and like uh, uh, in Gili, for example, normally eighty percent uh, of of uh, occupation rate during the New Year's, and and we found that only ten percent, mostly by domestic uh, tourists the occupation rate more than 80 percent now and during the pandemic only 10 percent and mostly uh, uh, domestic tourism that is the the, the, the condition of um, of tourism in uh, western satangara and and uh, i think uh, tourism sector experienced the the worst uh, uh, during the pandemic Thank you very much, uh, Pak pa Mansur. I think you have also answered the question raised by Pak Adia Warman. He wrote his question in the Q&A box. So you have already answered uh, Pak Adia Warman uh, question. Thank you, Pak Mansur. Let's now 
listen to Ibu Ludia answer to Lydia's uh, question, second question. Please, Ibu Ludia. Okay, Bu Lydia, you asking about the response of agricultural sector to the effects of COVID-19 pandemic. Okay. Uh, actually, the agriculture in West Papua is not really good, like uh, agriculture in Java. So, like the we still traditional. Most of the people in West Papua still produce uh, agricultural product with traditional way, and we depend mostly on the food supply from outside Papua. But the government already urges people to you know go back to the local food. Because in Papua, actually, we have a uh, kladi or taro and we have sego. So we are urged to go back to the local food. But you know, as people are used to eat rice, so this local food are, you know, getting, not forget, but we still eat taro, we still eat sago, but like uh, food that we eat occasionally, not every day, but for rice, we eat for morning, afternoon, and for dinner, we also use rice, but for the local food is uh, we not eating all the time. But we are trying to go back to the local food that the government hope that all people in Papua can can motivate themselves to eat local food and plant local food in their garden. So hopefully it can be done in Bolivia. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Oh, that's my question, my answer, Pa. Yes, thank you very much, Ibu Ludia. Uh, I would like to end this session with a short question to Pak Willem. You have described in your presentation yeah. the result of your research about the risk. Yes, yes, sir. What would you recommend? to the government and local people okay. uh, from yes, from your uh, result of your research on the risk. Yes, what yes, should I, yeah, uh, local okay. government and uh, local people do? Okay, uh, it, uh, actually the, I just like uh, in last week, uh, FKP seminar, there's a, a, a social cap capital solution by uh, uh, my concern from UPGM, it's Sam, Sanjo, Sambatan Jogja. So maybe in, in here, we, 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 we also have the same uh, Sambat, Sambatan as, the, uh, as in Jogja, it's, it, it's called Maren. So we can, maybe, maybe, maybe I can really like uh, gather some information around that and I can like, like uh, make uh, some like group WhatsApp, like same as in Jogja, so can really meet uh, and as the place to gather uh, local lo local local farmers and also the government and buyer to like they can conduct their, their business safely but really uh, have an impact to the local economy that 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 key without have to wait to uh, settle and local government assistance maybe that's okay very good point so <laughs> you uh, recommend your local people to promote solidarity yes. and the local government to promote efforts to uh, re, uh, to uh, promote the uh, some something like uh, Sonjo in Yogyakarta. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> the idea that was discussed last week. Thank you very much, uh, Pa Willem. We still have some five minutes, Lydia. Uh, should we use the remaining time for uh, UGM committee to... Uh, I think there is one more question on the Q&A box okay, from let me Pak Agung Riyadi. Okay, okay, yes. Okay, let me read the questions from Pak Agung. I look at the BPS data of some expenditures on health. NTB is the highest, Maluku is the lowest, although all of them are lower than provinces in Indonesia. 
My question to all presenters is, can the health expenditures be used to turn back the COVID and in the other side to increase sectoral and local economy in NTB, Papua, and Maluku? Okay, very good question. Thank you very much, Pak Agung. Pak Mansur, could you answer this question, please? Um. I think uh, the budget is still used. <laughs> so how do uh, we uh, return it to use in uh, economic sector? Because we have now, now we are dealing with a pandemic, with health uh, problem, you know, because uh, the confirmed case increase every day. You know, and uh, the number of, of, of confirmed case also increase. And, and there is no tendency of reducing the number of quantum cases so that we need the budget, you know. We need the, the money to, to overcome the problem of uh, COVID. Uh, and I think uh, <clears throat> we need a, a huge number of money for dealing with, uh, with COVID pandemic as my personal experience, you know. If you are in the uh, hospital for 10 days, for example, uh, we use uh, million, millions of, of, of money for one person, you know, for health uh, um, uh, facilities, medicine, uh, for example. Um, and I think if the pandemics, uh, or if uh, we can end the pandemic and then we will have a uh, a healthy uh, or a rational budget, but in this situation, I think uh, we need a lot of money to deal with uh, with the uh, health problem instead of uh, of economics. You know, because the first priority is nowadays to deal with uh, health problem without um, overcome the health situation or the health uh, condition. Then we cannot do uh, anything to improve the economics. So especially okay. protocol, yeah, health protocol is, is uh, limit the economic activities of the people. So we cannot produce anything without um, a strict health protocol. So we need to release health protocol and of course, uh, by um, ending the pandemics. And then after that, we... Presentation, you did a uh, reported report that uh, the local government has reallocated the budget. And yet, yeah. the local government has not yet uh, overcome the problem of the pandemic. Okay. Mm. Ibu Ludia, would you like to answer Pa Agung's question? I'm sorry, Papri, in my Zoom, I cannot see the question. Uh, I was disabled since the beginning. Okay. So it's about how yeah. how the people and the local government reallocate the budget. Can it solve the problem? Solving the problem by reallocating the budget. Sorry, can you say it again? Yes. It's something like about... Uh, can reallocating budget solve the problem of COVID-19 pandemic? Okay, the budget from the government, maybe. Uh, the allocation of the budget, actually, it cannot solve the, the COVID-19 pandemic in West Papua because even the government already have the budget. As we can see, that the number of cases in West Papua is increased. 
the government actually have the budget for the health uh, sector and also for the economy, like giving, uh, how they said, uh, bantuan social for the community. But because of the community in West Papua is still not, how do you say, it, uh, uh, didn't do the protocol of the health thing. So the number is increased, like wearing masks. Even the government already uh, the policy that everybody should have wearing masks if they go outside, but still many people doesn't wearing masks. And we have to be forced by the the police, something like that, on the street, and uh, they're guarding the street and looking at the people who are not wearing masks, and then they will ask to stop and then giving masks by the police. So even something like that happened, but still people not wearing masks. So I think even the government allocated budget, but the community also have to support the government so we can reduce the number of cases in West Papua. Um, but the budget also important because many people uh, cannot, you know, have income because of the pandemic. As we can see in West Papua, many cafe and many like small business who sell food on the street have to stop their business because of people afraid to buy food outside. So that's what my answer Pa. Very good point, Ibu Ludia. Pa Willem? Okay, so maybe I, I can add it some more. Uh, maybe I, I, I will not recommend it to uh, the government allocation on health expenditure to be allocated to other expenses because the healthcare is the key to like uh, uh, bring back the economy to do where it was because we, we, we can let, let choose between economic and health because we have in this current situation we have to focus on the health system so the one thing that the government, either central or each local government in Indonesia, needs to be focused more on make sure that protocol, the health protocol, is really being followed by the social, so, uh, the, the community. So, like, they really like uh, make it like in India, so they just sweep, got whipped by the, the 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 police, so everyone can follow the protocol. So, because it, it is important to. Uh, everyone in this world to follow the protocol and let every country to follow, to really follow the protocols to press the number of COVID cases before we can start to talk about bringing the economy back like it was before the day. So that's my question, sir. Okay. Uh, my answer. Okay, so fiscal policy do help us in uh, combating the uh, COVID-19 pandemic but it is not enough so all of the people need to support uh, the effort to to uh, combat the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic that is uh, my uh, conclusion of the answer from all of the presenters three presenters I noticed that Ibu Agatha Vidati wrote an answer to pa one, uh, I think. Yeah, so it's about uh, the point is is that in West Papua there is a contribution from oil and gas and mining industry. Maybe that is the explanation of why the economic growth in West Papua is still positive even after uh, the COVID nineteen pandemic. Okay, thank you very much for all of the uh, people that raised questions and all of the uh, presenters for, for your answers. Uh, Lydia, I think it's time for us to end uh, this session. Again, thank you very much for the presenters and all of the uh, audience for uh, joining us in this session. And I think I should uh, return the microphone to Lydia to lead the uh, remaining uh, program of this session. Lydia. Thank you, Pa Sony. Um, I would like to invite Pa Gumilang, who represents the organizers for the next IRSA International Conference. Silakan, Pa Gumilang. Thank you, Ibu Lydia. Thank you, Pa Priyansono.
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity uh, to share the 16th uh, IRSA conference in Yogyakarta uh, next July 2021. So IRSA conference is IRSA's main annual event that promotes the event, advancements of research across the country. The conference will facilitate open discussions and debates, uh, transfers, uh, transfer of knowledge, strategies for policy formulation and networking among scholars and policymakers. Each year since its establishment, the IRSA annual conference has been attended by many academics and policymakers from numerous Indonesian institutions. So the 16th Indonesian Regional Science Association International Conference is going to be hosted by the Faculty of Economics and Business at Universitas Gajah Mada in collaboration with IRSA. The main theme of the 16th IRSA conference is institutions, human capital, and development. The conference will be held between July 12th and 13th, 2021 via Zoom webinars. And you can also check out the official website at the following link. So the theme are institutions, education, and health. And there are so many topics that um, a lot, I think a lot of scholars and policymakers can participate in. And we look forward to receiving your abstract uh, via the Comptol uh, registration page. Uh, we're working to get uh, the keynote as well as the plenary session speakers. Uh, we're still waiting for a confirmation from Professor Len Pritchard, who is the RISE Research Director. Uh, we hope that he can be the keynote speaker for the 16th IRSA conference. Uh, we have received confirmation from Professor Ari Kuncoro from at, uh, Universitas Indonesia, Dr. Asep Suryahadi from Smeru Research Institute, and Dr. Ariana Utomo from University of Melbourne. And we're still waiting for a confirmation from Professor Remahana from Harvard Kennedy School. Uh, so we're also going to hold a book launching uh, written by Professor Iwan Jayaziz of Cornell University. And we're still waiting for uh, the discussions, uh, discussions for the book launching. Uh, we're also uh, very excited um, to announce that we will hold uh, pre-conference workshops. So in collaboration with the ANU Indonesia Project, University of Canberra, IRSA, and Universitas Gajah Mada, uh, we're going to be conducting three pre-conference trainings uh, between July 10th and 11th. So the first one is the introduction of geographic information system, GIS, by ANU Indonesia Project and University of Canberra. The second pre-conference workshop is the introduction to choice modeling for economic valuation by EEI Indonesia. And the third one, which is still in confirmation, is the introduction to online survey design by JPLC. And so, so this is the information for the registration. Um, we have registration fee for participants, presenters, and student presenters uh, for early bird, regular, and ad hoc. Please also check out the conf tool um, page if you like to submit your um, abstract and um, subsequently follow the uh, updates regarding the conference. And these are the important dates. Uh, we've opened the abstract submission um, back in January 6th, and we're waiting for abstract submissions, and we will open the abstract submission until April 4th, and then uh, we will have some uh, activities until uh, the July 12th, 13th conference date. So we really look forward uh, to receiving your abstract and hopefully uh, we will be able to see everyone during the Zoom webinars on July 12th and 13th. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Ibu Lydia. Thank you, Pagila. And thank you very much for all speakers for presenting this morning. Um, it's really interesting to hear from Eastern Indonesia and I wish you and we all wish you, I guess, the best of luck in revising your papers and look forward to the book. Yeah, I think the book will be very valuable contribution to capture the what, what happened in Indonesia during this um, very, very difficult uh, part of our history. Uh, so that's it from me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Pa Sony. Um, I will just share screen for some additional information uh, for everyone. Uh, 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 submit application for research support. There is some research support, 25 million, not a lot, but uh, 
uh, lumayan gitu ya. If you would like to uh, submit for IRSA, um, you can look on the website for the information. Um, and there are some research topics that uh, you uh, that can be uh, you can apply. And I was told that mahasiswa S1 juga bisa mengajukan. Yeah, so it's very competitive. Yeah, everyone can submit. And also next week we will have another uh, webinar with speakers or uh, speaking also on the regional or local perspective of COVID-19. Speakers will be Arianto Patunru of the AD, uh, uh, ADU Indonesia Project, Australian National University, and also with Nu Harto from TBWA, which is uh, a consulting firm, I believe. And in the next week, uh, the next week after that, presenters from Universitas Atimura, Ambon. So, uh, thank you everyone. Silakan uh, bila akan leave. I will put this uh, information for a little bit online so you can see it. But uh, thanks again for all speakers. Thank you for uh, Sony who helped me a lot in sharing the, the, the session so I can focus on being DJ. So thank you everyone. Silak uh, kalau akan makan siang, selamat makan siang and hope to see you soon in next FKP events. Terima kasih. Terima kasih Bu Lydia. Terima kasih Pak Pri. Goodbye Terima everyone. Ya. Salam sehat. Terima kasih Bu Lydia. Ya. Terima kasih Bu Lydia. Mudah-mudahan bisa ke Kei lagi Pak Welom. Saya ke Kei ya. tahun 2019. Oh iya, nanti kalau kesini kembali aja. Ya, <laughs>